Jesus does any miracles and tonight do keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. He's in our midst and he's about to do wonderful miracles in our midst. Uh, before our Lord Jesus does miracles, signs and wonders, he always shares the word. Because uh, before the miracle and after the miracle, the most important thing is to know God, to uh, hearken to his word. And so tonight we want to read some passage from the Bible. And uh, if you don't have the Bible, don't worry, just follow along. But you have that, do turn with me to the Gospel of Mark chapter 5. Gospel of Mark chapter 5. We know that in everything that God does, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. Uh, faith is a requirement in anything that God does. And I'm going to read a passage in the Bible in chapter 5. And here it speaks about our Lord Jesus Christ as he was called upon uh, to bring healing unto a certain individual and his name is Jairus. He is one of the rulers of the synagogue. In verse 21, in Mark 5, it says, now when Jesus had crossed over, in Mark 5.21, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So he believed in our Lord, and many of the people who came to our Lord Jesus Christ came in desperation. Because here Jairus knew that his daughter was about to die. And he, has, and he must have, being a ruler of the synagogue, tried every possible means he can. To bring her help and healing. Finally, he came to the point where he knew there was only one person he could turn to. And his name was Jesus. And so he came to Jesus personally. And he says, Come, lay hands on my daughter. For she is going to die soon. She's at a point of death. And then Jesus says, unto him. And Jesus in uh, verse 24 tells us here, so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him 
because they want to see what Jesus will do. And along the way, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. She has suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. So she also was desperate. Another desperate woman, she has spent all her money to the best physicians in her time and she was no better. In the end, her only hope was Jesus. And on her own, she came to Jesus and she saw the big crowd that was about Jesus and she said to herself, if only, it was really a, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And the moment she touched him, verse 29, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, Immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in a crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you? Now the word throng means they are actually touching him. They were pressing upon him. You see the crowd thronging around you and you say who touched me there were a lot of people who were touching Jesus but one touch was different one touch was different and he knew that one touch was a touch of faith the one touch was a touch that said if only I may touch him, I will be healed. Now remember he was on the way to heal Jairus' daughter. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. And remember what Jairus said. Come, lay hands on my daughter, for she is at the point of death, and she will be healed. What was his faith level? His faith level was that if you will come to my house, lay hands on her, I believe at that point that she will be healed. And that was different from the other woman who said, you don't have to lay hands on me. You don't have to even know me. You don't even have to see me. I don't even have to touch your face, your hands, your body. If only I may just touch your garden. And she say to herself, if I touch his garden, I shall be healed. See, her faith was different from Jairus' faith. And you know the other story of another ruler of the synagogue who sent his servant and also in different accounts he sent his servant in other accounts he actually came and then the servants went first and said uh, come and come and heal this centurion's servant is a centurion and uh, he loved the nation of Israel and Jesus on the way to heal the centurion's servant saw the centurion and the centurion says I am not worthy that you should come to my house this was a gentile not even a Jew I am a man under authority he says when I command a soldier go and he goes come and he comes as you know all armies they have a hierarchy system in disobedience to your commander is worthy of punishment. In the Roman times, it was punishable by death. 
He says, when a, com a command go, he goes. When a command come, he comes. And then he turned to Jesus. And he says, you say, you speak, you command. And my servant will be here. I'm not worried for you to come to my house. But I believe that if you say that my servant is healed, then my servant will be healed. That was a different faith level. Same Jesus, three different faith levels. And Jesus marvel and say, Jesus marvel and say, I have not found such great faith in Israel. Say there are many who will come from the east and the west and they will say with Father Abraham. And he says, let it be so according to your faith. The Bible tells us from the very moment the servant start recovering. I want you to know that even if our Lord Jesus Christ was physically present in our midst, you can throng him. You can hold him. You can fall at his feet and grab his feet. But it will still depend. As in the Bible time, as in our time, it still depends. On your faith. Different people in Jesus' time when he's alive, different faith levels. The same in our time tonight. Phanuel, the archangel, who has been instrumental in the 1950s revival when he worked with William Branham, is here tonight. And we have tonight in our midst, although you can't see him, Yukatuk Ma'al, the same spirit being who worked with Jesus, who brought all the same miracles to the Bible people. Tonight, according to your faith, God will work in your life. So this woman said, if I touch I will be healed. And it was so according to her faith. But then Jesus works with everyone according to the level of their faith. Because He loves everyone. No matter whether you are great faith tonight or little faith. No matter where your life is, Jesus is prepared to work with you. To bring you the abundant life that He promised of spirit, soul and body. The Lord Jesus is the true and the living God. There is no other but Him. And He wants to give you both spiritual life as well as physical life to live for Him. So Jesus continued with His disciples and when they said, You say, who touched me? But everyone is touching you, thronging you. And He knew one touch was different. And in verse 32, Jesus looked around and he knew that there was a woman who was healed. Tonight, many of you are going to receive your miracles. Some of you might receive gradual miracles. But whatever it is, Jesus is here for you. When he looked around for her, the woman knowing Jesus was looking around, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her king and fell down before him and told him the whole story of her life, the whole truth. She must have told how she had gone everywhere for healing and could not find healing. She had gone to the best doctors in town and she could not find healing. And finally, all her hope was on Jesus alone. And she admitted that she was healed. And Jesus said, it was 34, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. She was already healed when she touched Jesus' hand. Why do you think Jesus looked for her? Why do you think Jesus still wanted to find her? She could continue walking, couldn't he? She was healed. She got what she wanted. She could have gone on with her life. Why did Jesus want to look around for her for? Because tonight God is not just interested in your healing. If when God heals, it is because He show you His love. God, our Lord Jesus was not interested in just healing the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was interested in knowing her as a person. Jesus was interested in the fact that she would know that our Lord Jesus loved her. That our Lord Jesus cared for her. That our Lord Jesus wanted to know her as a person. She was not just a piece of meat to be healed. She was not just a number to be healed. She was a person whom Jesus wanted to have a relationship with. Why do you think we hear her story in the Bible? Because she came to know Jesus. Not just the healing of Jesus. She came to know who Jesus was. Jesus, the giver of peace. And the word peace also in the Greek word imply. Irony in the Greek word. Shalom in the Hebrew word. Meaning fullness of life. Peace. Completion. Jesus want to complete her. See, she could have gone on to her life and be healed. But she not, might not have peace in her heart. She might not have peace in her life. She might not have peace with God. I know many of you came tonight for healing. Jesus cares for you and He will touch you. But Jesus is interested in you to give you both life and you may know this Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Now it's not just when we have faith. I know I could sense it in your heart. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't believe, to some extent. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't have some manner of faith tonight. And there have been many, many crusades. Miracle services, prayers for healing of men and women of God throughout the ages and from time to time we hear about them. And if you go to any one of them, just as you came here tonight, by your coming you show that you do believe to some extent. But it's not just our faith that heals us, although faith is part of the vehicle. Faith is important. See, what does faith do? Jesus said, your faith has made you well. And belief is an important part of faith. Because after that, he went on. And he moved on to Jairus. After blessing, he wanted to bless this woman. He doesn't just want to touch and heal her. He wants to bless her with peace. He wants to bless her with wholeness. He wants to bless her with a relationship with Him. And on that day, in the midst of thousands of people, this woman knew Jesus loved her and wanted a one-to-one -one relationship with Him. Even though you may be among many, 
Jesus and our Father God knows your very heart and your life. And He wants to have a one-to-one -one relationship with you. After He has blessed the woman, while He was still speaking to the woman, verse 35, some of the people from the ruler of the synagogue's house came. Remember, he says his daughter was dying. And while this ruler had gone to soak out Jesus, saying, my daughter is about to die. She's dying. I got no more hope but you. Some of the people from his house, his servants and his friends came and said, in verse 33, your daughter is dead. Can you imagine the ruler of the synagogue coming all the way to Jesus? And now Jesus was wanting to heal her. They were on the way to heal her. And the bad news came. My daughter, your daughter, is dying. Can you imagine the grief on the synagogue ruler's heart? Can you imagine the grief on everyone? Oh, we are too late. Oh, if only we had gone to Jesus earlier. And they say, why trouble in the teacher? Why trouble Jesus anymore? Your daughter has died. I want you to know, no matter at which point you give yourself to Jesus, no matter at which point you cry to Jesus, you might have said, I wish I come to know and call upon Jesus earlier. No matter at which point you call upon Him, Jesus will never give you up. As I say in this life and in the next life, you'll still meet Jesus. And when everyone's heart drop on hearing that the daughter is dying. Verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word. And was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. See, when you're given something to Jesus, Jesus doesn't give you up. So it's only believe. And all that the ruler of the synagogue faith had was the comfort of Jesus. He says, don't give up. Only believe. And verse 37, when they reached the house, he did not allow anyone to go in except Peter, James, and John. When he came to the house, he saw a tumult. And there were people weeping and crying loudly because this was a prominent person in the community. This was the ruler of the synagogue, and this is Israel. In Israel, the synagogue was the center of the town. Everything revolved around the synagogue. So there were all the community people, and all the others who have loved the ruler of the synagogue, who had known the ruler of the synagogue, they were gathered there, and they were crying, and they were weeping, because they had seen this little girl. They had seen this little girl. They seen her grow up and it's so unfair that a little girl should die so early before she had lived her life. So with all the commotion, Jesus came and said, Why make this commotion? And we, the child is not dead. She is sleeping. When they heard that, they knew the child was dead. Then the funeral service is going on. See, every one of you are alive today, even if you are struggling with various ailments and sickness. Here is a person who is dead. A 
Uh, Jesus said, she's not dead. They laugh. They mock. They ridicule him in verse 40. They did not believe Jesus. So Jesus put them all out. And he took only his three disciples and the parents. He went into the house. And then he took the child by the hand. And he says, Talita Kumi, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl rose up, she walked, and she was only 12 years old. She was perfectly healed. And whole, and she was risen from the dead. Jesus told the ruler of the synagogue, only believe. See, it is not just our faith. That brings a miracle. Our faith puts us in a position to receive the miracle. We must always be in a position of faith. Faith, faith is a rest. And I like to read a passage of the Bible that all of you know by heart from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And Paul tells us that there is faith, there is hope, but there is love. And he says it was 13. And now abide faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest is love. And he's not talking about ordinary things. He says in verse 1 and 2, If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but does not have love, I become a sounding brass or cleansing symbol. And he had to give, had to give a prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all, all faith, so much faith that you could remove mountains, but you have not love, you are nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. He says, love suffers long, is kind, love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puff up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and the earth, all things. Look at love. How powerful love is. Some of you might say, but, but I love and I'm not healed. How can love be more powerful than faith when I need faith to move this mountain in front of me? I need faith to be resurrected. I need faith to be healed and whole. Yes, indeed. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, According to you, because we all know the scripture by heart. It says, Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith takes hope and make it a substance. Faith takes that which is invisible and make it visible. Faith takes that which you cannot feel and make it feelable. Faith take that which is not a reality in your life now and make it a reality. Faith is powerful. Faith is important. Faith can move mountains. But yet Paul says, love is greater than faith. Now we know that if faith is a substance of things hoped for, that there is hope and hope is important. Faith is important. Where does love stand? Galatians 5 verse 6 says that faith worketh by love. And the Greek word work in Galatians 5 verse 6 is the word energize, which is the Greek word energize. Faith is energized by love. How is faith greater than love? Because without love, faith hasn't got any energy. Now, how is faith greater than hope? Romans 5 tells you, from verse 1 to verse 5, that hope does not disappoint 
Because God has shed His love in our hearts. That is a verse trying to tell you that hope is also energized by love. Now, you know why love is greater than faith and hope? Because the process of taking that which is invisible and making it visible. Taking that which is in hope and bringing it to the reality. You hope to be healed. Faith brings healing to you. The energizing of the process of faith and the process of hope are both by love. That is why love is the greatest. Without love, there is no hope. Without love, there is no energy for faith. That is why faith, there is hope, there is faith, there is love. And it is love that energizes hope. And it is love that energizes faith. Both exist because of love. And why are we talking about it tonight when our hope is to be healed? When our faith is that we believe and we want the Lord to touch us. Because I encourage you, no matter where your level of faith is, since faith is energized by love, and since hope is energized by love, it's obvious that you cannot have more faith unless you have more hope to energize it from, to, to convert it into a substance. And you can't have hope unless you have love. Because hope is not disappointed. It means that hope can exist as hope because there is love. That's a meaning why it's not disappointed. What is disappointment? Disappointment is you lost hope. So faith is not, hope is not disappointed because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. Because of the abundance of God's love. No matter what level of faith you are tonight, because it takes faith, as you saw the Bible story I read in Mark 5, it takes faith to believe in God. And sometimes our faith struggle, like in Mark chapter 9, there was a man who, who got a child who was demon possessed, who this Jesus' disciples cannot cast a demon out. And finally, when Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration in Mark chapter 9, Jesus saw all the things that were going on. And then he saw the father of the child. With tears crying down, he's rolling down his cheeks, he says. Then why did he say it? Because Jesus told him, if you can believe, if you can believe, see, faith is still important. If you can believe, all things are possible for those who believe. Then the father cried and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. Said so I believe, but I still struggle. Help my unbelief. See, so most of us are in that category. There's a part of us that believe. There's a part of us that struggles to believe. Thank God, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus gives us the faith. How? Because He loves us. I'm telling you the story of how to remain in that place so that Jesus can do a great work in your life. What is faith tonight in this cover? Faith is the position of rest in His love. What is hope? Hope is a position, is a vision you have from God's love. One is a vision, one is a position. But both comes from you being in a position of loving God. Jesus is present tonight to do a mighty work in your life. And whatever level of energizing you are able to receive tonight. But the best position to be is to be in the position so as you are in the position of love, faith is energized by love. 
And we are in the position of love. Hope catches its vision from love. And in that position of rest. See, it's not your faith. It is the faith that God is working and energizing in you. And even though you're eager to be healed, eager to be touched, I encourage you, just enter the position of loving God and letting God love you. That is the best position for God to touch you tonight. To heal your life. To heal your bodily ailments. When we struggle, we are not resting yet in His love. The book of Zephaniah tells us, Chapter 3, verse 17. We will rest in His love. Oh, King James. King, New King James. He quiet us in His love. Come to God like a little child. And think about it this way. You say in your heart, like the woman, if I may touch Him, I shall be whole. But you know, one thing about Jairus and the woman, they didn't love Jesus only after Jesus healed them or raised Jairus' daughter. They loved Jesus before Jesus touched them. And here's the thing. You might say, if only God does all these things for me, I will love Him. And God does many things to different bring good things to people. But why should God do something just to make us love Him? Will you want your daughter, your son, to love you because you did something for them? They might love you more. They might appreciate you more. But in your heart or heart, don't you want your children to love you? whether you give them something or not. And every one of us, whether some of us, our parents might have gone home to be with the Lord, and you know it is true. You don't want someone to love you because of what you do to them. You want someone to love you for who you are. And in it, whether you know it or not, God gave us life. God gave us these things and all the things of this world. But God still wants us to love Him as He is. So tonight, I encourage you to love God as He is and let that quietness of His love come into your heart. I read to you the passage. And it's from Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 and he says the Lord your God in the midst See, Jesus is in the midst of us so how do I respond to God when God is present in our midst how do I get touched by God when God is present when two or three are gathered together in his name there he is in the midst of us the Lord your God in your midst. The mighty one will save. And the Hebrew word save means heal, touch, may you hold. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. With his love. You know what the word quiet means? It means that he brings you into a rest into a rest where you don't struggle anymore. You don't try anymore. And in your heart, you say what the Hebrew children say. You heard of the three Hebrew children in the book of Daniel. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what the three Hebrew children say when Nebuchadnezzar told them to bow down and worship the false idols that he made? The three Hebrew children say, We know our God can save us. 
But even if our God does not save us and we die, we will still not worship the idol. Kill us if you need to. That is called the rest of faith. Did they believe? Yes. But are they twisting God's arm and say, if you don't do this for me, I will not love you. If you don't do this for me, I will not get to know you. Never. Because they know God is God. Who are we? Who are we? God is not a man. And let God be God. Let God be Almighty. And you know why they say that? Because they love their God. They love their Yahweh God so much that even if they were to die, they will still say, I love you, God. Whether God does anything in your life or not, you willing to come to the position to say, God, even if I'm not touched tonight, I will still love you. I want to know you. Because if we all die, we're going to meet God face to face. My God, if you heal me, also fine. I'm not coming to bug into you, oh God. I'm coming to just Those three Hebrew children say, we know, see, they believe. Their faith was at rest. Is your faith at rest? If your faith is at rest, then let God do His work. At His own leisure, at His own pleasure. And they say, if God doesn't choose to save us, we still will not bow to them. And when Nebuchadnezzar was so angry, he commanded the furnace to be made hotter than before, beyond what it was made to. It was so hot, beyond normal, that when they opened the door of the furnace, all the soldiers who Open the door, die. And when the three young men were thrown into the furnace, or rather walk in, since there's no one pushing them, they voluntarily went in. God said, deliverance. The fire did not touch them. Nor was a smell or smoke on their hair or on their clothes. Neither their clothes, not a single hair on their body was singed. God chose to do a work. That is the rest of faith, he says. He will rest in, in, in his love. He will cause you to rest in his love. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice for you, over you with sin. That's the Lord your God in the midst of you. So I encourage you. We do have five miracle services this year. And we have the same spirit being who work with Jesus in signs and wonders. And they are here with our angels tonight. There is hope. There is faith. There is love. We need faith for God to work. But that faith must come to a rest. You know how sometimes faith is a process? And it's a process must be completed. So that sometimes it might take a few sessions and then your faith is complete and you say, Ah, it is done. But for many of you, as your faith rises in Him, as you rest in His love, there's faith, there's hope, there's love. But love is the greatest. Tonight, all I ask you to do 
is the love of God. And in the presence of His love, let God do His work. So let's just stand one more time and we sing that song. I love you, Lord. And as we sing the song, I love you, Lord, give Him all your love tonight. And all your heart's adoration. Thank you, remain seated. Uh, if you're not feeling that well, as you sing in His love. And just say, I will love you, Lord. I will worship you. Even when the Hebrew children, Jesus is interested in you as a person. And He will bless you in His love. And cause His love in your life to grow forth. I love you, Lord. We thank you for it. I love you, Lord. Let me change the words of the worship. Thank you, Lord. July 29th tonight receive your miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ okay, sir. be thou healed let's all love the Lord and let the Lord do his work
can always verify it and so you don't have to be afraid of doctors and all that they can verify what God has done but from tonight onwards many of you have received a touch from the Lord a miracle and you'll find that like the Bible says from that hour forward from that hour forward they begin the recovery now some people are going to take a few times when they get a complete recovery some are instantaneous but whatever it is as we mentioned we just focus on knowing jesus and loving him and then let him does do whatever he does in our physical bodies and just keep rejoicing in the lord and uh, that you'll receive and even as you go back you'll find that the lord continue to do a mighty work some of you when you sleep at night you're going to see a visitation from the lord and you're going to taste with the angels are still working on you in different areas and uh, you find that when you go by there's a tremendous energy that continue to flow over the next couple of days and you'll find sir that when you go by you get more and more strength yeah. and uh, so you go for the morning you find something like this hour before you go to sleep tonight you're going to have a wonderful sleep as never before because yeah. I bless you and the angels of God go with you and all the angels that have been assigned here, each one of your angels, we pray for them to be strengthened. And uh, that you take the gifting of God in your lives and continue to be strengthened and recover and uh, make a good, steady recover, recovery. And, uh, and uh, be strengthened in the Lord in every way. And most of all, feed your spirit, man, and continue to be strengthened in the Lord. And God will bless your life and establish you. We're going to say a closing prayer. Father, we thank you for the work of your Spirit. We give you all the glory, the worship, and the honor. Even as the woman with the issue of blood said, If I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. So it is in the hearts of some of your people here, they say, if I'm here tonight, I will be here. Let it be so according to your word. And even as they receive this touch from the Lord and your spirit, there has been release and this is a beginning of miracles. We're going to see greater and greater signs and wonders as the faith of your people increase. To know that you are the true and the living God. You are not just a theory. You are the name above every name. The name of Jesus over your every bone, every tissue, every mouth cell, every physical organ and tissue in the body. The name of Jesus strengthens each one of you. The name of Jesus releases His creative works upon you. That you know that by standing in the presence of His canopy, of His Spirit, and of you got to Ma'el and Father, you have received your touch from the Lord. That is sealed upon your lives, and most of all, the peace of God. The same peace that Jesus blessed the woman with. The peace of God be upon your life. 
And let your heart and your mind be at peace tonight. Let your heart and your mind be garrisoned by the peace of God which passes understanding. And in the atmosphere of peace, the Lord seals His fullness of His work in your life. And the Lord transform you into the fullness of His grace. To be more like Jesus in every way. So Jesus, we welcome you tonight to continue visiting over each life here. Just as you bless a woman with the issue of blood personally, we pray tonight that you visit and bless each one of them individually tonight. And they are not just a number. Each one of them is important to you. Bless each one, Father. Bless each one, my Lord Jesus. Visit each one in the spirit, in the soul, in the bodies, in the home. And bring peace to their lives, to the lives of their family and loved ones. To bring joy and rejoicing in them because they know of the goodness of the Lord. So that they may tell of the story of the Lord. And those of you who have been touched, share your testimony over the next miracle service. Let us know. Contact our pastors, our leaders. And we want to know your story. Because you are an important story in this revival. The work that God has done. You're a story of many millions of other stories that will come. Of how the Lord touched them, healed them, and brought a miracle into their lives. Thank you, Father. As we close for tonight, we thank you for your blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace, favor, help, wholeness of life. In spirit, in soul and in body, the Lord preserve you blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for this great revival that He has ushered for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.